So hi everyone, uh, I'm really happy to be here at the Wisher Fest. Um, I will be telling you how about a little bit about disrupting fresh food uh, through logistics and API, connecting local stores uh, with uh, urban citizens. So my name is Elsa uh, and I'm the co-founder of Epicerie. Um, so you know how it's always a hassle uh, to shop for grocery food uh, after a long work day. Um, well, I was in Paris working for uh, another startup um, and I realized uh, there are so many amazing artisans. We have the best products, the best fishmongers, the best butchers, but uh, we can never uh, shop uh, at the, their stores during the week uh, because we don't have time to go to buy our veggies, to buy our, our meat. And um, uh, that's... Uh, uh, actually also a problem for them because uh, you always end up at mini markets, you buy uh, poor quality food, but also for them uh, it's a low traffic uh, and up to 12% waste. Um, and uh, that's uh, a really, really big issue because they have high functioning costs uh, with people, location, stocks. And that's um, the two-sided problem we decided to solve with uh, Epicerie. Uh, Epicerie, uh, if you don't know uh, yet what it is, uh, I, I, I wouldn't expect so. Uh, it's an app uh, where you can, in one click, uh, get all the products uh, from your uh, local artisan stores uh, and you can get delivered to your door in one hour. So um, it works really simply. Um, uh, we, you enter your address, uh, you can choose to get delivered within the hour or in the three coming days. Uh, once you've entered your address, you can see all the available shops in your area. Um, and then uh, you can uh, buy your meat, buy your veggies, buy your cheese. You can shop at multiple shops at once. Uh, the price are the same and then in stores. And uh, then you just pay uh, two uh, euro 90 for delivery. So uh, once your order is getting prepared by the shop, uh, you uh, just wait for your courier to get deliver uh, you, your grocery food at home uh, by bike. Um, I just, uh, I don't know how to launch the video actually from, with this prompter, uh, but uh, I'm gonna show you uh, a little bit more visually what we do. I'm sorry the titles are in French, <laughs> but uh, I think you can get an understanding. Uh, sound? Is there any sounds? So, um, uh, so uh, how did you, how do we do this? Um, so uh, it's a really simple uh, mo model. It's a platform model. So uh, we decided uh, not to go and um, source our products directly from producers and have to uh, buy them and then sell them and risking having stocks and uh, waste. Um, also, we wanted to be able to get a one-hour delivery. Uh, and we decided to capitalize on the fact that all uh, these products uh, were already in town. Uh, actually, the, the artisans uh, and little shops, they spend their lives uh, sourcing the best products. Um, and they are uh, really a, a label of quality. Uh, so we, we decided to digitize this offer that uh, was actually not on the internet. Um, so, uh, it's a marketplace, we take a 25% commission on sales uh, and so far uh, we've launched in December last year and uh, we've uh, gathered 250 shops uh, uh, on Epicerie. So, um, it wasn't easy to digitize a market that was not digitized, uh, we had a lot of challenges. Uh, as an illustration, a uh, fishmonger uh, doesn't know uh, what he's going to sell in the next days until he knows uh, what fish was caught. Um, also, the price vary a lot with, uh, with the seasons uh, for fruits and veggies, but also for meat or uh, cheese uh, in some way. 
So um, we studied the question a lot with uh, artisans uh, directly. And once we got an understanding on their problems and uh, how we could address them, uh, we built an app, a dedicated app, um, that uh, we give to them on a dedicated device. We provide them with a tablet uh, where they can actually just uh, um, activate or not the products they have according to um, the market uh, they had uh, in Rangis or uh, directly from producers. They can also adjust the, their prices um, according to season uh, and uh, also a special peak like for instance Christmas and so on. And uh, it's a really, really simple device because uh, you, can, you must imagine that uh, butchers, fishmongers, most of them were not uh, really accustomed to the internet. Uh, I mean, they knew they, that there was something to do and they were like, oh, should I do my website? And well, we do everything for them uh, and we connect them to consumers uh, directly uh, through APIs. So we build their uh, merchandise online, um, and uh, once they have, like, for instance, activated products, it's automatically and instantly on uh, your iPhone app uh, available to order. So um, they um, they trust us because uh, also we we offer them a merchandise zone that is far larger than uh, what they could reach without the delivery, um, and they can also uh, create loyalty with their consumers. Um, and then, once the order is ready, which uh, was the first part, uh, there is delivering fresh food, which is also a really big challenge, um, as most of you here probably know. Um, we wanted to offer, since the beginning, a one-hour delivery. So, uh, very fast, we realized it could only be done in the city by bike. Um, and uh, we also realized the opportunity uh, that uh, bike delivery was uh, quite developed by the restaurant delivery, but we don't use the same slots um, for delivery than they do, because when you order, let's say, a delivery, uh, on delivery a burger, uh, you order it to get delivered at 9 or 10 p.m. because you don't have time to cook. And we, most of our orders are um, through the day, but also uh, end of the day, like uh, 6 or 7 p.m. when you go back from work and you pick up your kids from school. So, um, yeah, we realized also that one big challenge would be to plan rounds because uh, we, all, we, we enable multiple shops um, order. And uh, also, and last but not least, um, we have uh, in very different products. So we have really bulky items. And uh, for instance, uh, when you deliver a seafood platter, uh, you better not uh, deliver it by bike, otherwise it's just going to fall apart. Also for some pastries, um, I mean, we did a few crash tests, and uh, you better not deliver it by bike either. So um, how did we solve that? Uh, or how are we solving it right now? Um, we decided right away that uh, it would be better to outsource delivery because there was already a very big supply for delivery and uh, we wanted to be able to add to the order volume. Uh, so uh, we developed our own algorithm. Um, we plugged in API all the delivery service that you can imagine, such as Strat delivery by bike, but also collaborative delivery. And um, and yeah, and uh, now we are able to, for one order uh, to know like if it's bulky, uh, if uh, the I don't know the weather is bad and we won't find a bike, and to find a better delivery solution um, at the best price to have the higher quality service. So uh, that's an algorithm that we call Meta Dispatch. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it enables us today to also have a cargo, cargo bike uh, ready when uh, it's needed for a really important order and so on. Um, I think you understood by now that what we want to do is to transform fresh food in cities. Um, we, there are many, many initiatives that exist, uh, but we wanted to offer something that brings both convenience and uh, and um, and quality. Uh, so the convenience of an Uber and the quality of uh, um, uh, La Ruche Kidoui, for instance. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a lot of challenge. So uh, the team asked me if we had a magic wand, uh, what uh, could we improve? 
So first of all, um, even if there is a big delivery supply, uh, it's still very expensive. So after seven months, uh, our average cost of delivery is six euro per order. Uh, so uh, if we had more supply and uh, um, and uh, also low cost supply, it would help us uh, reduce our functioning costs. Uh, also, I told you that uh, we need cargo bikes, uh, and uh, it's uh, usually very difficult to find one and very expensive. So yes, the bike delivery was developed by the restaurant delivery, but uh, all the rest uh, of the solutions are still uh, well low in volume. Um, and then uh, collaborative delivery, we've done a few pilots uh, with um, uh, companies that do collaborative delivery. But yet, uh, it's uh, still a really low offer um, and uh, sometimes lacking uh, quality. And I, I would certainly believe that uh, if, uh, for instance, uh, BlaBlaCar and uh, Uber um, shown us an example for transport, uh, for collaborative transport, if you could get the same, um, if you get, if, if you could get the same with uh, delivery, it would help help us uh, have low cost delivery, but also improve the quality of the service. Um, then uh, I will say that uh, uh, there, is, there are a lot of actors today, but we don't communicate so much with each other, uh, and we don't work uh, enough with each other. So yeah, today we could actually just use the same fleet as uh, Deliveroo does on the unoccupied slots. Um, but uh, for, for, for now, like everyone is like really doing their things on their own. And the same goes for sharing information. Like when you look for a courier, uh, you have actually to ask for someone to come to the pickup points uh, where they need to get the package. And uh, you can actually just, uh, if you could actually just find a nearer person um, uh, that, to, that they wouldn't have to go up to the pickup points uh, before they started working. Um, and then, <laughs> uh, if we keep dreaming, um, so we've started a few pilots uh, with uh, refrigerated uh, pickup points. Um, uh, for example, with uh, Bolloré subsidiary um, Blue Distrib. Uh, but uh, they only have a few spots uh, in Paris um, where uh, we're starting to allow people to get their groceries, um, for instance, down their office building uh, after work. And uh, if we understand that people uh, have, uh, uh, for instance, they don't know what time they will come home or um, they don't want to pay for delivery, we need to start building these solutions with pickup points. And uh, we can only dream there would be so many points at the subway station, down of your building, where you could actually just get uh, your food delivered. Um, so thank you uh, for listening to me. I'm uh, here with my team. Uh, they are here in the middle. Um, there is uh, Kevin, that is uh, our head of operation, that can that can answer all your questions about logistics. Uh, Stefan, our CTO, who can un uh, answer all your questions regarding APIs, uh, and also Victor and Benjamin, who can uh, t tell you more about our supply. So, um, well, thank you for listening to me, and uh, I invite you to try uh, EP3 uh, with this five euro coupon uh, dedicated to Wisher Fest. Thank you very much. We have time for really few questions, but uh, we have time, right? One question here. So, five euros is almost a free delivery, right? <laughs> Uh, so my question will be very simple. How did you get your first users, like the people who are actually ordering the food? How did they know about the pastry? How did you talk or advertise to them? Um, we had a press lunch that was uh, really successful because I think what we're doing is quite new. Um, everyone heard a lot about food delivery and food uh, tech in general, but fresh food was a market that was not really well addressed yet. So uh, it helped us get a few um, influencers and also our first users. But also um, our, um, quite our differentiation is that we have our merchants, uh, the little artisans that are really ambassadors of the service. And actually, they were looking for a way to get more loyalty to the, for, for their customers. Uh, 
so they are also uh, advi advertising the service um, to their customers through little cards, through a sign on the door that says, okay, uh, I'm closed right now, but uh, you can actually just get a uh, 24 hours order on uh, EP3. Yeah, one question here. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Uh, a question, you said that you get 25% commission on sales, and but the price of the products is the same as in the stores, so that 25% eats into the profits of profit margins of the local artisans. Does it make sense for them financially, or are they happy about that? Um, that's a really, really interesting question. Well, uh, it's today it's impossible to make a consumer pay more than what they're used to. Uh, I mean, you can pay, f you can make them pay for a service, but uh, some similar service that have tried to do markup on uh, prices such as Instacart at some point, uh, they weren't uh, very successful about that. Um, so uh, it's a challenge, especially when you're with someone whose uh, uh, business is their own to convince them to, uh, if, uh, to effectively give you some part of his margin. Um, the first thing that um, must be considered is that Epicerie for them is a new uh, shop online. So for them it's like they don't have a rent, they don't have like people to pay because it's the same people that are already here and same goes for the stock. So all the usual functioning costs that have to endure, uh, they don't have them opening this new shop. So uh, it's actually a new shop that uh, the only costs are tota totally variable. Uh, so uh, they understand that quite well. And also uh, after a few months, uh, we've seen that uh, the average basket is twice higher on EP3 than in store. So uh, for them it's like really uh, a, a, a really good way to work and to value like the work of their employees during the day, even if sometimes like, you know, during the afternoon people are, are, are less busy, they can actually um, value the work of their employees and um, uh, have a quite good margin on each basket. Thank you very much. We have no more time, but you will be able to, to reach her. She, you will be here with your team, right? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Julia, Julia, if you can come, Julia, Julia. Oh yeah, she's here. Nice. Oh, maybe, maybe during the time of the setup, you can ask your questions, right? Yeah. During the time of the setup. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I I just have um, I would like to know more about which are the products that uh, your little shops and artisans are able to put in the platform. Uh, do you have a short list or they have to, to, to just uh, choose from a couple of uh, uh, type of products that you are able to propose? Um, very interesting question also. The, so um, in the shop there, is, there are usually 500, 600 uh, products, uh, different products. Um, and I mean, if you had to scroll on your iPhone for 500 products, like that would be a really like such a hassle that you would like you could as well like go to the store. Um, so what we do is we do a selection of like let's say 80% um, of like the uh, basic products, the best sales of the merchants. Uh, for I don't know if you know. Uh, <laughs> cheese, but like I love cheese, so I always talk about it. So Conte, Brie, and all these cheese are like classic and that you want to have like every week. Uh, and actually in store is the same, like they sell these products like most, most of the time. And also we make a selection of their um, uh, really emblematic products, like differ differ different seed products, whatever. Uh, so it allows them uh, to have um, uh, both the, the, the best things, but also uh, to show uh, a lot about their branding, their identity, and that's how we select the products. Just to finish, uh, and the, when uh, you talk about cheese, uh, how do you set up the price? Do you say that, set it about uh, specific grams, or or it just uh, it's come for the <laughs> Uh, it was really difficult, but yeah, we, we set it up uh, portions, um, like standardized portions for one person, and um, then it helps us like uh, have a product that you can sell even if it's per kilo usually in stores. Thank you.